Okay, Susan Hyatt, so pumped to have you here on Get Gutsy today. Yay. Welcome. Thank you. I like your polka dots. That's Thank fun. you. I'm totally jazzed about this shirt. Look, it has bell sleeves. I like those sleeves. I like those <laughs> sleeves. I have a shirt like that with the, mine are even flowier. I kind of like yeah. my, my Stevie Nicks shirt. Yeah. I wear it. I'm like, woo. <laughs> I know. I feel like, hey, what's <laughs> exactly. happening? <laughs> you really do have to be mindful about what you wear. You know, like you, I do work from home. I know you do a lot of traveling and, you know, you host retreats. I, the time of we're recording this, I think you just are coming back from hosting a mastermind retreat in Havana, which is really awesome. But, you know, the majority of my days, I am in my home office and yes. I just wear like, you know, nothing. And it, that would be okay. <laughs> right. But today I, I was like, oh, I actually got this really awesome. My client sent me this. I got to stand up and show you this necklace. I just got it. What is happening? Yeah, I totally love it. That thing. I opened it up. I was like, oh my, oh my God. Like I have to really organize the shirt accordingly. It's <laughs> so, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. I talked Very to nice. I had a client call and I was like, oh my, it's, it's so great. It's so me. It's so me. Um, which is so awesome. But I'm looking forward to getting to know you. As I said, we were just initially chatting before I hit record. I've been admiring your work for quite some time. I love how you just put yourself out there. You, in my view, say whatever you feel like <laughs> saying. <laughs> I, I have to admit that I have a fluorescent light up sign that is my favorite curse word that I actually moved for this interview because I did not want to offend members of your audience. But what that is... That is true. What? What does it say? I'm not going to say it because I might offend your audience, but my audience loves it. But it's my, favorite, offend my, audience. It's my favorite F word. Okay. I love that word. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, good. You I was like, you know, I, maybe I should move this. But yes, in general, I say pretty much what I want. Whatever. Okay. okay. So I, we're just going to dive right in there. How did you develop the skill to be able to say whatever you want? So you should know that prior to become, well, let me just be honest. I've always been pretty mouthy. Okay. Um, my teenage daughter who is 17 is literally like the carbon copy of how I was as a teenager, which is I wasn't so much a, a rule breaker, but I was very mouthy about the rules I didn't like. Got so it. I was always pushing the envelope, but not really crossing the line. And my 19-year-old is a line crosser. Like, there's no discussion. I'm just going to cross. Oh, there's the line. I'm just going to cross it. Um, and so, <clears throat> honestly, parenthood mm -hmm. and being a burnt-out working mom mm -hmm. early on when my kids were really little led me on this journey of, you know, I was, I was just a chronic people pleaser. <laughs> There's my dog. Hi, doggy. Hi, yeah. Julia. Go get him. Let Go me get let her in. Get no doggy. <laughs> Go get her. Yeah, I told her I was like, I don't edit Come this stuff out because it's real. It's Come like on, hashtag boo -boo. real life. We like to see that. We like to see hashtag real life. <laughs> I just I knew that was gonna happen, Jenny. It's all good. I just told him I was like, y'all. I told her I wasn't gonna edit this out because this is hashtag real life. <laughs> This is hashtag real life. So, so I spent a lot of years not saying what I thought as an adult. So somewhere between college and um, being a young mom, mm -hmm. I learned that I needed to just suck it up, do what I needed to do to support my family. And I really wasn't saying what I thought. And it really... Um, it became a situation where I was like, who am I? Like, what has happened? Is this all there is? Mm -hmm. And it was really through, um, I started to devour self-help mm -hmm. and I hired my own coach and mm -hmm. then I decided to go to coach training and it was through learning the tools that one learns in life coach training about being your true self and speaking your truth and um, that your thoughts are not necessarily reality. Hello. Right. That rocked my entire world. I'm like, wait a minute. What? Everything I think is the truth. Right. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? What I'm thinking mm -hmm. might not be true. Um, mm -hmm. and it really changed me. Mm -hmm. And so, so that was April, 2007. I left my former career in real estate, started my life coaching business. And it was, 
like coming home because mm -hmm. when I started college, I was a journalism major mm -hmm. and I changed my major like four times. I didn't know what I wanted. Right. But when I became a coach and started my own business and all of a sudden I had my own platform. So I mm -hmm. had a blog and I had mm -hmm. like, look, we can fire up our webcams and have our own TV show. Yeah. I was like, Hey, now I have my own soapbox, if you will. And no one can tell me no, I, right. that I can't say that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it has taken many, many years to get to the point where I'm comfortable saying what it is that I that I want to say, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and and I help other women do the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, such a great story. Was it an evolution? Like, was it kind of like baby stepping in? Like, oh, because I, you know, curious too. I also uh, was trained as a journalist in, in college, and mm -hmm. I, that led me to public relations. My major was really mm -hmm. PR, but I am trained as a journalist, and I, I think it helps so much with what we do with communicating and knowing how to tell stories and all of that. Was it like, okay, this is really what I want to say, but I'm going to kind of like dial it back a bit because so-and-so might be pissed. Like, mm -hmm. what was that evolution like for you? Because I know our listeners right now, I, some of my clients too, and I'm like, you got to say it. Like, there's that fear sometimes of what like they, you know, I'm always like, mm -hmm. who's they? You know, what mm -hmm. they will think. And so mm -hmm. what was that like for you in terms of peeling away those layers Really good question. So yes. So, so when I became a coach, that was a big deal because everyone knew me as a realtor in my town. And so it was really scary to say like, no, I'm not doing that anymore. Now I'm doing this. Okay. And so that was like the first layer of the onion, if you will. And then no one. So it was really strange because at first I felt like I had this online world where mm -hmm. people knew what I thought really okay. knew what I thought, yes. but then my local world where they didn't really know. And I was still, um, at that time, I'm a very spiritual person, but I'm not a religious person. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so it was like, then the next thing was admitting to local people, like, I'm not going to mass anymore. <laughs> <gasps> you know, and, um, and then, you know, I had friends who were like, well, what do you mean? And, um, just, I was, I was holding back mm -hmm. my spiritual beliefs, my political beliefs. Mm -hmm. Um, and it probably, so a little bit, oh, you know, at a time yes. I started really revealing who I really was and what I really thought. Mm -hmm. And, um, I would say, probably five years ago was mm -hmm. when like the gloves were off. It was like, it didn't matter who you were. Like, uh -huh. this is who I am. Take it or leave it. And so I would say there was probably a five year process mm -hmm. of, you know, slowly admitting, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. who I was and what my beliefs really were instead mm -hmm. of pretending, right. You know, all of these things that I no longer was or mm -hmm. believed. Yeah. Yeah. Very powerful to that. It was interesting because I quit my last ever corporate job in November of 2007. So mm -hmm. similar timing as you, and then discovered coaching a few months later. I was like, Oh, this is a thing. This is like what I've always done. I didn't know it was called that and I could just do that. Okay. And so been on this journey for, for quite some time like you. Um, but I'm curious if that like five years in, was it, was it like, coincided with a particular birthday? Was there something that happened that you were just like, that's it. Like, I'm just done pretending with anyone anymore. Um, I actually, so I, I had a friend and I, it is past tense. Past tense. Okay. <laughs> the, uh -huh, H -A -D. So I had a friend who, and I still love her dearly, sure. but she, and she was very supportive at first. Mm -hmm. But what I noticed was she started to become very uncomfortable. Um, the more successful I became, mm -hmm. the more outspoken I became, mm -hmm. the more uncomfortable she became in our friendship. Mm -hmm. And the sort of the pivotal moment was, now that you asked me, mm -hmm. um, I was a guest on a podcast like this. Yeah. And someone was asking me, someone asked me what my big moment was when I decided to leave real estate and go into coaching. And I was telling that story. And in telling that story, I said, well, that was back when I went to church, just kind of in passing. Right. Right. And so my friend 
heard this podcast and sent me this long email about, well, listen, I was listening to this podcast and you said that's when you went to church past tense. And, um, aren't you scared that if you're not going to church, first of all, it was like, aren't you scared for your soul? Right. And then the secondly, <laughs> right. And then also, aren't you scared that you're going to lose business because good Christians Mm -hmm. um, won't support you. And mm -hmm. I was sort of like, okay, so first of all, like mm -hmm. what? Like, I didn't even, I didn't even remember saying it. And secondly, mm -hmm. I was like, and, you know, and it was sort of those, like, mm -hmm. I'm praying for you emails. Yes. Yes. So at that moment I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I am going to effectively communicate to everyone who knows me. Like mm -hmm. I, I've been high, part of this confusion between mm -hmm. she and I is that mm -hmm. I haven't been honest about right what's true for me. And so now I'm just going to be honest and let the chips fall where they may. Mm -hmm. And I won't say that we, there was an immediate friendship breakup, but like within a couple of years, mm -hmm. it, the distancing happened. And then she was very much like, uh, I just can't do this anymore. You're just too much. Yes. And it was like, yeah, well maybe for you, but mm -hmm. this is who I really am. And if mm -hmm. this bothers you so much, we really shouldn't hang. Right. Right. Thank you for sharing that story. And I'm, I'm with you so much. You know, I, I never was going to church, so I didn't have to have that conversation. Although my father is very Catholic. He goes to church every week. He comes to visit me. He lives in Atlanta. I live in Massachusetts. He goes to the church here and you know, that's who he is. I'm married to a Jew and I met Steve and he's like, well, he's Jewish. I'm like, yeah. And he goes, well, you're Catholic. I'm like, no dad, you're Catholic. Like, <laughs> it's all, it's all good. like we're good. My parents divorced when I was younger, I lived with my mom. I was like, we, we went to church on like a couple holidays because grandma was there. But right. you know, what I have experienced in my journey is I also am very spiritual and, mm -hmm. and I talk about that and I'm proud of that. And I didn't always like say it in those words because I like didn't really know what to call it. But mm -hmm. you know, my pathway into yoga, which was what I did when I left corporate was like, Oh my God, I have to do something with this yoga. Like it makes me feel so good. I spent so many years feeling shitty and doing horrible things to my body. And now I wanted to do really good things for myself and for my body. And I uncovered the spiritual wealth of awesomeness. And so I will have programs that kind of speak around those things. But in the last few years, I've like really claimed spirituality. Like this is me. And I tend to attract those who are into that too. And we're into like, psychics and you know this and that right. and crystals and um right. and just really trusting that the universe is a benevolent place and that we mm -hmm. all belong here and you know we can speak up and we have this calling mm -hmm. and all that well what i experienced something recently not you know with with the friend thing although i definitely had a lot of friendships um dissolve as i've gotten mm -hmm. deeper into this path but i never it was like bizarro but i think it's important that we talk about these things mm -hmm. because this is often what's like not discuss. And so then when it happens, it can feel so like, whoa. Yeah. I had a, a, a client who, and I was proud of myself because I really spoke up. I wasn't just like, mm -hmm. oh no, I'm so sorry. Because I would have been apologizing, like, mm -hmm. this is who I am. Mm -hmm. Who you know, she came into one of my programs. I looked back and like she'd been on my list for like a year and a half, you know, mm -hmm. taking in all of my program, you know, all the free mm -hmm. stuff I put on and everything. And, you know, at one point it was like, she sent me kind of like the email that your friend mm -hmm. sent you. Um, because I talked about that I am into, I have a person, you know, my sister died when I was a teenager mm -hmm. and I have a, a spiritual medium mm -hmm. and she channels my sister and it's beautiful mm -hmm. and lovely. And I shared that. And a lot of my clients were like, Oh my God, can I have her information? I want her to, yeah, what's, what's her number? <laughs> yeah. Like, can I call her? It's like, yeah, hold on. Let me get it. All right. And this particular, um, my, Ooh. <laughs> not a fan, not a fan. And I was getting, um, yeah, that whole thing of just like, and she used a word that I was like, you know, especially with what's happening right now, the word was reprehensible. And I was like, oh, there's a lot of things that are reprehensible. Right. Um, I right. mean, like Larry Nasser and the, um, the mm -hmm. crazy debacle with, you know, sexual abuse and everything. But like, I mean, what, how do you handle that kind of stuff? You know, that's one particular example. Mm -hmm. I know you have other critics who are just like, I can't believe you said that. I mean, do you just kind of let it roll off you? Do you have a, a ritual? <laughs> <laughs> well, I light this candle. Um, <laughs> no, I, um, it's a really fair question because I do get a considerable amount of uh, trolling and hate mail. And 
And you know, I might be saying things uh, reprehensible, like women should enjoy equal pay, or uh, you know, like it's like the stuff that incenses people just cracks right. me up, or how dare you wear that, or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. um, and so, honestly, I have some boundaries in place in my business where um, my assistant gets most of the email first, right. like not my personal email, but. Right you know, the general email box sure. and she only shares hate mail with me that she particularly thinks I would find hilarious or I could use, um, in a blog post or something like that. Most of it I don't see. Uh -huh. Um, but the stuff that I do see the way that I deal with it is, so I would say 99% of the time mm -hmm. it doesn't bother me because I've just built up such a resilience muscle around feedback. Mm -hmm that unless there's some piece of it that resonates like ooh, you know like when you receive feedback where it stings a little but yeah. you know that like maybe there's a kernel of truth there yeah it's like ooh, maybe you know but if it's so like you know just not resonating at all that it's any kind of bit of helpful feedback mm -hmm. then um you know i just delete it block that sort of thing mm -hmm. but so if it's on social media um I had somebody the other day, there was a, it wasn't a particularly flattering picture of me, but I didn't really care. My Facebook ad person said, you know, for whatever reason, this photo is the highest performing or converting photo in ads right. for you. So I think right. we should use it. And it's like one of my least favorite photos. I'll mm -hmm. give the lady that. Mm -hmm. But this woman went on to the Facebook ad and was just posting like really nasty things and you know, most of that kind of stuff, I'm just like, whatever, like this person mm -hmm. has nothing better to do than try right. Facebook ads. Totally. But if it's, if it's someone, um, that I know mm -hmm. that sends something and it bothers me a little bit, then I have to do my own self coaching mm -hmm. around like, okay, so what do I make it mean that they disagree with me mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. that they're upset by what mm -hmm. I've done? Mm -hmm. Um, because you know, I don't care who you are. It's impossible to, to not you know, care a hundred percent of the time about feedback. There right. will be some piece of feedback that gets to you. And when that yeah. happens, I have to like really look at, can I allow someone to be angry? Yes. Right. Yes. Like, can I sit in that uncomfortableness and just allow other people to have their feelings and be angry about mm -hmm. who I voted for or what I'm wearing or or Planned Parenthood or whatever else it might be mm -hmm. because the alternative is to hide mm -hmm. and not be honest about who I am and what I stand for. Mm -hmm. And that to me is more painful than, you know, random hate mail. Exactly. Exactly. And such a powerful message now for women to really take that in. How do you kind of navigate this is something that I've gotten tripped up on, you know, around politics. Mm -hmm. And you know, like you run programs for mm -hmm. your clients. I know you have, you know, you run lots of programs in your coaching career. You've got several going on now. Like, do you ever say, well, there could be people in this group who voted for Trump or, you know what I mean? Like some of that, like just, I'm just curious how you kind of your thought process and uh, you just kind of just go for it and trust that whatever's meant to happen will happen. How do you roll there? I do. I kind of go for it. And uh, exactly. I'm like, I, I find that most people who are attracted to me did not vote Trump. <laughs> however, however, I was running off at the mouth, as my mother would say, uh -huh. at a, at a live event and mm -hmm. had no idea that I was seated with a couple of folks who had voted. I mean, I would never have guessed, but they had voted right. for Gino yes. Satan. And, um, and it wasn't until the event was completely over that mm -hmm. it's, I found out in a very odd way that they, they were not open about their political beliefs before, during, or after. They never said a word to me. Uh -huh. But I did have this moment of whoop, like whoopsie, <laughs> like, because I was just like in rare form, at, you know, at that event, even for me. Uh -huh. yeah. um, I did have host a dinner party. I do these dinner mm -hmm. parties called girlfriends yeah. gone wild. And uh -huh. I did one right after the election last year in DC. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and I called it girlfriends gone nasty. And there was actually a woman who signed up and came 
who, um, I don't know that she was necessarily a Trump supporter, but she was very much like at her table saying, wow, she's just assuming about me. She's just assuming that everybody here, um, agrees with her politically. And I'm sort of like at girlfriends gone nasty. Yeah. yeah. I would imagine that if you signed up for that, yes. <laughs> that I can yes. speak freely. Yes. So there have been instances where I assumed mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. was incorrect mm -hmm. and it was all fine. Yeah. Um, but I tend to just speak my mind and mm -hmm. say what I think. And, mm -hmm. um, if, if people don't like that, obviously mm -hmm. they can opt out. They can, yes. you know, they don't have yes. to be a part of it. Totally. Totally. And I, you know, again, I just appreciate that in you because I think my background again, kind of having that journalistic background. And then I went, you know, into the PR side, we yeah. were advocating for a client, but it was all like very professional and like super corporate-y. And then when I went on my own, it was, I think for me, I just turned, I turned 40 in May of last year. And it's like this new level opened up and I kind of heard that might happen in my forties. Like, Oh, watch yeah. you know, this like thing yeah. happens. And I'm like, Oh, that's where I am where I'm just speaking my truth more, more. I'm, you know, shifting relationships that I've needed to shift for like decades. And I was just afraid to do that. And I'm like very curious to see what's going to happen next. <laughs> I'm like, where's this all going? I don't know, but it's good. It's good. I'm, 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 I'm down for it. <laughs> I'm here for it. No, I agree. I'm like, what my husband often jokes it because I'm 44 and it's okay. true. When you get into your 40s, something happens. And mm -hmm. then I have females in my life that say, wait till you hit 50, wait till you hit 60. My husband's like, what the hell? Like, when you get to be 60, 70 years old, like, what? I, he was like, I don't even know what's going to be happening. I'm like, that's right. Watch out. Watch out. It's just going to get better. <laughs> so let's talk about some of the moves that you've made. I mean, you've created this really awesome business. Um, to me, it seems like you're doing super fun things like you go on these mm -hmm. retreats around the world and you know your programs look awesome what were some of those moves that you made earlier on that got you to where you are today whether certain moves certain mindsets definitely mindset mm -hmm. um so definitely not listening to you know when you become an entrepreneur i mean what is it 90 percent of entrepreneurial endeavors fail mm -hmm. and so somebody's always got a uncle or a cousin or a brother or somebody who tried to run their own mm -hmm. business and failed. And so everybody wants to tell you those stories. Mm -hmm. And in the coaching industry, um, it seems like that's all you hear. Mm -hmm. And so one of the gutsiest things I ever did was decide mm -hmm. that, okay, so, um, I think the ICF had some ridiculous statistic that the average coach makes 30 grand a year. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, who's not average and can I learn from them? Like, right. because I'm not going to be part of that statistic. So yeah. I do think mindset has always been, um, choosing to develop a mindset that's gutsy mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. been a, a big deal for me. And then mm -hmm. also I would say continuously investing in things that maybe, um, and a, a consultant might have said like, Oh, don't spend your money that way. Spend it this way. Or, you know, that's kind of a crazy idea. Like I mm -hmm. tend to follow my gut, my body compass mm -hmm. in making business decisions as opposed to following strategy. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's always something that has been of great benefit to me because some of the biggest mistakes I've made have been, following strategy and not my inner knowing. Yes. 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 And it's right. like, even recently I'm like, why did I spend all that money on those Facebook ads? <laughs> Can I tell I was like, hello, 2016 and 17. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, well, that was an expensive experiment. Um, mm -hmm. I look at all this very and, and this is so awesome. You know, we're recording this in January tonight. I'm actually leading my first ever it's an online workshop around intuition. Ooh. You know, this is stuff that I'm like, this is what I've been living and loving like this lifetime and previous lifetimes too. Why the heck have I not just done anything around this? But well, I'm going to. And I'm so with you. What you said was gold. And that, you know, there's strategies just everywhere. People are sharing these mm -hmm. things in the social media, like, oh my God, that worked for them. That's totally gonna work for me. I'm gonna go do mm -hmm. that thing. Mm -hmm. And when you ignore your own signals, the way that we're mm -hmm. wired, the season that you're in, the cycle that we're in, mm -hmm. you suffer. And even mm -hmm. if you experience some short-term wins, it's not sustainable because it's mm -hmm. just not freaking you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm with you. I'm excited for your class. That's awesome. Yeah. 
I'm yeah. excited too. I think, you know, so how do you like, with terms of your ideas, because it seems like you've had this, you know, let's talk about your evolution and like mm -hmm. what you've been teaching about. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Like, where did you kind of, was it just like life coach general at first? At first, I was, it was just general life coaching. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I did was I had a, a bunch of different themed coaching packages because I wasn't quite sure what I yeah. wanted my niche to be. Mm -hmm. And and really, it was very life balance -y kind mm -hmm. of talk. Mm -hmm. um, and then a couple of things happened. One was... I started making money and becoming successful as a coach. Mm -hmm. And so other coaches started organically coming to me and saying like, Hey, how are you doing that? Can you teach me? Right. So I never really set out to be an entrepreneur's coach. That mm -hmm. was never part of my plan, but it happened because um, like you, I was in PR as well. We have very similar trajectories. Um, and so what I learned in PR and what I learned in real estate, I, some of the basic tenets of selling and branding and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. could be taught. Um, and then I also went on a weight loss journey, mm -hmm. which if you had said to me in 2007, that half of your empire is going to be teaching women how to love the skin that they're in, like love their bodies, lose weight. I would have been like, as I ate my bag of Doritos, mm -hmm. like you're crazy. Uh -huh. Um, and so it was really my own life experiences and what lit me up that created the niches that I have. So, so being a weight loss coach then evolved into being a body positivity coach mm. um, because I can help anybody lose weight, but it's that deeper um, work of how do you learn how to love your body no matter what, because we're all mm. aging Right. It didn't matter how much weight I helped them lose. Then they were like, oh, my muffin top, my stretch marks, my, mm -hmm. I have wrinkles. I, you know, mm -hmm. and it's helping women mm -hmm. understand how to love and take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. It's important. So mm -hmm. yes. that was yes. an evolution, an interesting evolution for sure. Yes. Yes. And that's what I love about this field so much is that the business evolves as we evolve. The mm -hmm. work evolves mm -hmm. as we evolve. And I, you know, I'll say to my clients, just start where you are, you know, mm -hmm. just start. Like, what are you excited about right now? Like if you mm -hmm. were to die like this week, okay, you're not going to, but like if you had to just get something out, you just need people to know this, you, you have this in you, you want to make this impact. What would it be? Because you'll do that now. And then it's going to, it'll, you know, the next cycle and the next cycle and the next cycle. How did you, um, how did you develop a strong relationship with, with money and mm -hmm. with, you know, with pricing? Cause I've looked mm -hmm. at your website. I see, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, my, my work too, I kind of played around with all different prices mm -hmm. and I'm really in this place where I, what I call like high vibe, high touch, high end, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I really like doing that deep work. There's mm -hmm. an investment involved because as we know, like if you're not invested, you're just going to flake and I'm just not interested. I'm not available for that. I'm available. For that. <laughs> I love that. I'm not available. I am not available. I have a full <laughs> plate without you flaking out. Okay. So, um, <sighs> what was, what has been your work around the money piece? That's why most coaches don't make it. They don't have the money piece down and their offers suck and they don't know how to make offers. Mm -hmm. So I think I really want to credit my real estate background for this because mm -hmm. I learned how to sell myself in real estate. Okay. And I mm -hmm. learned um, really early on in that business that, you know, people will afford what they want to afford. Mm -hmm. And so when I started my coaching practice, I mean, I did have to, in the beginning, I was charging $125 a session mm -hmm. and I was selling only one-on-one -on -one coaching. And so my whole first year was really, I mean, I did a couple of workshoppy things, but my whole first year was really one-on-one -on -one coaching. And then I was like, you know what? I got to figure out like, okay, there's only so many sessions I can do in a week mm -hmm. and I can keep raising my rates, which I did. Mm -hmm. um, but I need to figure, as I started working on multiple streams of coaching income mm -hmm. and deciding pricing my services more according to what I believe the value and the impact was going to have on the client right? versus money for minutes. Yes. Um, and so many coaches get stuck in that money for minutes model mm -hmm. where, um, and I even had, I sent a, a video reply to a husband mm -hmm. who a uh, woman wanted to work with me. She wanted to buy my six month coaching package. 
And she was like, my husband wants to know what the return on investment is. Mm -hmm. And first of all, when somebody typically, when Mm -hmm. somebody says I need to ask my husband or like my husband and I'm like, okay, that's a red flag right there. But number two, so I sent a video and I'm like, listen, Mm -hmm. what kind of price tag Mm -hmm. can you put on the following? And I was like, this is not a, you know, for 60 minutes, the session is this much. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's there's so much more to it than that. So mm-hmm. please don't discount like mm-hmm. what is happening here in that mm-hmm. way. And right. I'm very unapologetic about it because mm-hmm. listen, my first life coach that taught me that you can change your thoughts mm-hmm. and not everything you believe is true. The things that are causing you pain mm-hmm. might not be true. I felt like I'd won the lottery, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, and I think I paid $250 for that. Mm-hmm. And it changed my entire life. So it's just kind of like what kind of value, getting confidence in the value that you can have on somebody's life and the domino effect that that has on the world. Yes. Yes. And then when you look at it that way, I'm like, man, I'm not charging you enough. Exactly. (laughs) Like a million. Let me, let me raise that. This is priceless. Totally. When they're, you know, I think about that, I'm like, they're investing in my, you know, decades of me working this and right. again, lifetimes, like I came in with stuff here right. and it's the result that somebody's getting. I think sometimes, you know, I see some coaching industry and coaches mm-hmm. getting a bad name, you know, cause people mm-hmm. are like, Oh, these coaches charge too much. And like people aren't getting the ROI and they're not making the money. And mm-hmm. coaching isn't just about making more money. You know, that's not Correct. the only benchmark. That's not mm-hmm. the only uh, metric that one it's like well what would be the price of, of happiness and feeling good in your own skin no matter what the number says on the scale or mm-hmm. having a deeper relationship with your your spouse or mm-hmm. your kids or mm-hmm. whatever just feeling like you can freaking be honest for the first time in your life and I, I get angry when people kind of you know I just saw a post recently on that I'm like that's not the only thing and if that's the only thing that you're selling as a coach like that's on you but Right. I don't feel like that's what's going to sustain this, this industry is just talking about how much more money somebody's going to make. I totally agree with you. I, I 1000% agree with you. And I know exactly the post you're talking about. And, mm-hmm. and I, and I just think, you know, when I look at, even if I never, if I didn't make another dime off of mm-hmm. what I learned as a coach, mm-hmm. um, the mindset skills and the ability to be happy you know, and grateful no matter what mm-hmm. is like, what kind of price tag are you going to put on that? You can't. No, no. And just the people, there's just been such interesting, not only clients, but you know, colleagues, like things start happening. I'm like, holy crap. Like this is, it just kind of keeps getting better. You know, it's like, again, I'm excited for like the fifties and the sixties because every day just keeps getting juicier when you're willing to do the work. And so what is, you know, for you, it's just some of your personal practices that, that you do your spiritual practices that keep mm-hmm. you, you know, grounded, keep you tuned in so you can, mm-hmm. you know, be the, the best Susan Hyatt possible. <laughs> <laughs> so I will definitely say I'm big on morning rituals. And mm-hmm. so, um, I'm in the morning, I have to have quiet. I have to you know, have some time with my journal. I'm a runner. So Mm -hmm. believe it or not, uh, running is a moving meditation to me, you know, my best ideas. And I can, I can honestly hear guidance when I'm running more clearly than any doing anything else. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I have to be moving my body. I have to have a lot of quiet Mm -hmm. and I have to, um, I have to be fueling my body well. I have to get enough sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's really what keeps me going. If I'm not getting enough sleep, if mm-hmm. I'm eating, if I'm traveling and I'm, I don't have access to great food yes. and I can't move my body, like that's the worst case scenario. If you see me mm-hmm. tired, hangry, and I haven't moved my body, like don't even speak to me. Like don't, <laughs> don't even. Like, <laughs> I well, and you have to figure that out for yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, these mm-hmm. are my these. This is the fuel that I need. Mm-hmm. My husband knows that about me too. Mm-hmm. Or I'm just like, I just need quiet. I need you to. I just need you to get the kids out. I mm-hmm. need to take a bath. You know mm-hmm. that happens for me a few, like a few days ago, and I realized because now I'm doing a better job again. Just like mm-hmm. understanding what cycle I'm in. Like 
menstrual cycle. Let's just talk mm-hmm. about that. Like we freaking flow with the moon. Like I am the moon. Okay. And <laughs> I love that. I am, I am the moon. I am the freaking moon. All right. In <laughs> the sun. We have the same freaking cycle as the moon. Like that yeah. is rad. And I was like feeling stuff. I was like, I'm super emotional. Like things are happening. I'm like, oh, I'm freaking, I'm pre-menstrual number one. Plus it's a new moon. Like there were, it was just like this perfect storm. And you know, old Jenny wouldn't have known that would have pushed against. I've been like kind of mean to people. And then I just said, this is what I need. Can you just get everyone out? I need to take a bath, put my little oils in, light the candle and, and write my journal. Okay. Mm-hmm. And he gets it, you know, and thank God. <laughs> That's right. He's a smart man. He's like, I better let her get her bath. Mommy exactly. ain't happy. Nobody happy. Exactly. <laughs> So tell me, Susan, you know, what are you most excited about in 2018? Are there certain programs that you're like bringing to life? I know you've got podcasts, like just what are you excited about where you want to take people to find out more about you, all that good stuff. So the main hub to find me is shyatt.com. So it's S-H-Y-A-T-T. And what I'm excited about is I got a book deal for for Bear, which is my body positivity work. And that book is coming out in January of 2019. But pre-sales will be happening um, in the fall. And so, yes, I just dropped a Bear podcast on Mm -hmm. iTunes, Stitcher, everywhere Mm -hmm. you can find podcasts. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited about that and the Bear membership community that I'm growing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm super stoked. It's like all things Bear this year. So that's where you're putting your energy, really focus on that, getting getting ready for the the launch of the Mm -hmm. book. Mm -hmm. And is the book called Bear? It's called Bear, and we're working on the subtitle, but it's like, Uh you know, seven steps to... Uh you know, feeling amazing in your own skin kind of thing. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh my gosh. That's so awesome. Well, you are such a fab woman. I'm really pumped to have, you know, so are you had your light here and what I would love to know. Well, actually, before I ask you this finale question, this is like a curiosity I have. Um, okay. So you do a good amount of Facebook lives, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, what's your philosophy on this? Like a tactical thing. Um, <laughs> my brain is okay on like Facebook lives on your personal page versus your business page because we all know business pages like unfortunately don't get a lot of reachy reach um how do you play with that like what's your so I know we're supposed to be putting them on our business page because then you can retarget with Mm -hmm. Facebook ads and all that stuff I always do it on my um Mm -hmm personal page because that's where everybody knows I really am. Yes. Um, and so the energy is highest there. Yes. Um, so you will see my Facebook lives happening on my personal page. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just had to ask you that because I have done both ways and I'm like, I totally feel you. And I think that's really my, my focus for, you know, moving on. Where's the energy, the highest, Mm -hmm. like the way you said that was really really wise. Where is the energy the highest? And sometimes you're not, it's again, the strategy, well, you mm-hmm. can do the targeting and the blah, blahs and this and he's like, you know what? But it doesn't feel right. It's just, there's something missing. I know. And it, and it just, to me, it's, it's like, um, like one tactical thing, I don't know how to do this yet, mm-hmm. but I did a couple of webinars, um, in the past week to promote bear. And I want to Put the replays on Facebook Live, and I I'm not sure how you do that, but my mm-hmm. VA is trying to figure that out, and so maybe we'll test that out on the professional page. But I'm yeah, telling you, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, everybody's on. Everybody knows people are mm-hmm. smart. They know mm-hmm. you're not hanging out on your professional page, <laughs> so because it's like kind of, it's not the same. It's not mm-hmm. the same. There's just mm-hmm. a different, total different vibe there. Okay, cool. I just wanted to hear it straight from you. <laughs> All right, Susan. Well. You're one gutsy woman. What is the gutsiest move you've ever made and how does it inspire your life and work today? God, the gutsiest move I ever made was leaving a six-figure real estate career and starting my life coaching business just on a belief that I could do it. And with two little kids and being an equal earner in the household and, um, you know, I that we have this whole life because of a gamble. So Mm -hmm. how old were your kids at that time? They were, uh, six and eight. Okay. That's I, my oldest is nine. I got six and a half and a Mm -hmm. three and a half right now. So, uh, yeah, it's a great age. When I see where your kids are, I'm like, and then eventually they're going to be that, you know, older. (laughs) They are, they are (laughs) one in college and one's a junior in high school. Oh my. Oh my. So, so more space opens up is what you're saying. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Okay. Good to know. Well, everybody go check Susan out. You know where to find her. Good luck with everything this year, Susan. You are rocking it. Congratulations Thank on your book you. deal. You too. Yeah. We'll have you back on and talk about that when it comes out. How does that? I would sound? love that. Awesome. <laughs> okay, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. This is Jenny Penix sending you so much love, light, and faith as you get gutsy. I'll see you next time.